Welcome to Night City, the city of complete and utter excess. This journey was wild. The people you met along the way were wild. Night City is both an absolute spectacle and wondrous place, and also a vile and vicious devouring beast. Moments of hope and camaraderie are blended together with darkness and betrayal. Cyberpunk 2077 dropped me into a world that I wasn't trying to take over or dominate. I was trying to live in it and survive. CD Projekt Red proved that they can craft a great story and very complex characters. And overall, I enjoyed a bunch of the other aspects about it too. It doesn't nail every idea it tried, but overall it's a great package. However, we are in a unique situation where the game has undeniably been released broken and unfinished. Many things don't work as intended, and frankly, many things just don't work. For instance, my game crashed around 35 times over the course of 90 hours of playtime. That's more crashes than the collective of all the games I've played during the whole PS4 generation. And let's not ignore the fact that the game has been taken off the PlayStation Store as of recording this video. It's really hard to recommend what I think is a masterpiece when it doesn't perform like a masterpiece from a technical perspective. Thankfully, I'm not here to convince you or dissuade you from playing this game. There are plenty of people far better at covering the missteps of this game's launch, and there's plenty of reviews out there. My favorite people covering everything going on with this game is both Legacy Killer HD and Yang Ye. And if you are not watching them already, I suggest checking out their coverage of the game and their reviews of it. But the life path that I'm choosing is to help you dive into the underbelly of Night City and come out with the never fade away platinum trophy. You won't come out unscathed, but you will tell your own tale of Night City. Are you ready Choom? Let's go. This is Platinum Hunters, the show where we look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Trophy Guy videos just like this one. You might just find your next Platinum Trophy. The best way to describe this Platinum Run is that it's not difficult, but it's complex. You can play the game on any difficulty you like and still get the Platinum Trophy, which is always great to see. And it can be done in one playthrough, thank god, because this game is long. The complexity part comes in when you take a deeper look at all the prep work you need for many of these trophies. There are 14 missable trophies that range from how could you possibly miss this to oh crap, it didn't tell me anything about this, guess I'm going to have to do another playthrough. Many trophies have prep work to get them, and others have fail states that can prevent you from achieving one or more trophies at a time. And then, there is a potentially huge grind in store for you if you don't use certain methods to mitigate it. As we go through the trophy guide, we are going to get into the mechanics of the game so that you make sure you are on the right track while leveling and gearing up your character, or hopefully you can course correct before you miss it completely. There is also going to be plenty of additional resources in the usual spot in the description below to assist you, including the trophy guide that I personally use to complete this game in one playthrough. Play this game at your own risk. If you want to play it right now, just know that the game is actively being patched and hotfixed, so many things are subject to change. Patch 1.10 dropped before the recording of this video, which is the first of two major patches for the game. It fixed a lot of things, but it's also been reported to have broken a bunch of other things. The devs can't seem to catch a break and neither can the player, so I can't stress enough that if you want to play the best version of this game, you should wait. For the people ready to jump into the underbelly of Night City, this guide is going to be representative of patch 1.10 and major updates to the trophy run are going to be found in the description of the video and in the pinned comment. If it ever gets to the point where I need to redo the guide because it has become too different, then that's exactly what I'll do. Let's get started 
and hop into our automatic story trophies in which there are six, including the world, for completing the main narrative. The actual four trophies related to the multiple endings will be discussed last to avoid spoilers. As well, I will try to be as vague as possible with the guide, steering clear of any narrative stuff unless I absolutely have to. Same thing with the five main character storylines for Judy, Pan Am, River, Rogue, and Carrie. All five of these NPCs have their own multi-part storylines that will unlock a trophy once you complete them. However, keep in mind that they are also missable if you fail the quest lines at any point in which you will have to reload a previous save to be able to try it again. Don't worry too much as you will really have to go out of your way to fail them, refuse to help them in dialogue, or in some rare cases choose an option that will piss off the NPC. Also keep in mind some of these missions won't appear one after another as time is a factor sometimes. Some missions will appear after two or three in-game days or even a week. Your first three sets of trophies which appear relatively close to the beginning of the game are Judy vs Night City for helping Judy Alvarez, Life of the Road for assisting Pan Am Palmer, and to protect and serve for partnering up with River Ward. The other two NPC quest lines will start near the end of the main narrative, starting with Bushido and Chill, where you complete Rogue's side story. This storyline is only two missions long, but it's very important that you befriend Johnny Silverhand in the first mission, chipping in, to be able to proceed to the second one. Once you complete this storyline, you will unlock Carrie Eurodyne's storyline as well, and you will be able to collect the trophy, Two Bad Decisions and his storyline is much longer with seven parts to it. Once you're done, that'll take care of the side character stories which are actually very excellent experiences. One thing about this game is that it has excellent writing and voice acting which creates some tense moments. While doing these missions or anything with dialogue options, be wary of one incredibly hard to miss but still missable trophy called Stanislavski's Method. This trophy requires you to choose the dialogue option that is associated with the life path you chose at the start of the game, and you're going to need to do this 10 times over the course of your playthrough. There are probably over a hundred opportunities written into the script for you to do this, and you only need 10 for the trophy. But yes, I guess it's technically missable if you never choose any of them and you run out of dialogue. Just do yourself a favor and get it out of the way. Now here are a bunch of trophies related to more side missions and things you can do in the city starting with I Am The Law, which is a nice reference to Judge Dredd, which happens to be in a dystopian city very similar to Night City. For this trophy, you're going to get your Judge Dredd on and hunt down 17 cyber psychos loose in Night City. These missions will appear after you complete certain story missions until all 17 boss fights become available. Some of these are pretty tough, so make sure you go in ready for a brawl. And quick note that all 17 Cyber Psycho missions count towards completing the gigs and NCP scanner hustles that we will be talking about shortly. Another trophy to take down is called the Wandering Fool which requires you to collect all of the tarot cards via a mission from our resident fortune teller Misty called Fool on the Hill. This trophy is pretty easy as all the tarot cards get marked on the map as you progress through the story. All you gotta do then is go out to the area, use your scanner on the mural, and this will translate to a tarot card. You will get the trophy when you get all of them. You will most likely activate the frequent flyer trophy just by playing and driving around. This trophy is awarded for unlocking all the fast travel terminals. The ones you will most likely be getting last are the ones located on the outskirts of the city, but as you play through the main and side missions you are definitely going to drive by all of them, or at least I did. While leveling up and augmenting your V character, work on getting the trophy Full Body Conversion which requires you to have at least one cyberware implant equipped in all 11 different categories. You can only equip the implants by visiting a ripper dock and getting them to install it for you. Some implants you will find out in the world as rewards or enemy drops, but the others can be purchased through the ripper docks. You will get the trophy when you have one of each type of implant equipped. Try not to go too crazy spending your money on these because some of these are pretty expensive and you need to save your money for this next trophy. The vast majority of the eddies that you will do all this hustling for will be spent towards buying all the vehicles for sale for the trophy 
Auto Jock. As you progress through the game and increase your street cred, many of the quest givers will start to sell you cars that you need to buy for the trophy. There are 26 to buy in total and you will need around 1.8 million eddies to purchase them all. At the rate that this game gives you eddies, that's a lot of money fam. You will finish everything there is to do in this game and not have enough eddies to buy all of these cars. There's also not much to do at the very end game, which makes this trophy a really annoying grind. This game desperately needs new game plus. Now clever players have found ways to make money very quickly, which include money exploits, and I have provided them in the description below. No idea if CDPR will end up patching them out later down the road, but as of patch 1.10 they still work, and they're going to save you a ton of time on the platinum run. 25 to 30 hours in fact. I had no shame in using these money exploits, because it's ridiculous how grindy this trophy is. Additional content and some changes to the in-game economy are eventually going to fix this issue. But in the here and now, take advantage of what you can. One more note before we move on. You will find few secret cars that are either repainted versions of some of the ones on sale or completely different cars like Johnny's signature Porsche 911. But these do not count towards or replace the cars you will have to buy for the trophy. Speaking of Johnny's car, that's a nice segue into our next missable trophy, breathtaking. The feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Which will pop when you have collected all of Johnny Silverhand's things like his signature samurai jacket and sunglasses. There are 7 items that count towards the trophy and thankfully all of them except one is given to you while you play through certain main and side missions. I have left a guide showing you exactly where to get all of the pieces in the description below. The one you really need to worry about is Johnny's pants and that is found in the gig mission called Psychofan which will be sitting in a suitcase that is marked on the map. If you miss it, you will miss the trophy. You can also miss the trophy if you dismantle Johnny's gun before you collect all seven items. Lastly, you can miss out on getting the Porsche 911 car, but know that this item does not count towards the trophy. But I made sure I got it cause damn is it a sweet ride. While you are working through the main narrative and side missions, don't forget to work through the gigs and NCPD scanner hustles as there are a bunch of trophies to collect here. One for each Night City district in fact. You will see the yellow markers titled Gig and the blue NCPD markers on the map and they will be scattered all over the place. Seriously. This took a while to do and put all the crimes in Marvel Spider-Man to shame in terms of how unnecessarily long this takes. But the 7 trophies for these mini missions are its elementary for doing all the gigs and NCPD scanners in the Watson district, City Lights in the City Center district, Little Tokyo for the Westbrook district, Mean Streets for the Haywood district, The Jungle for the Rough and Tough Santa Domingo district, greetings from Pacifica for the Pacifica district, and finally the wasteland for the Badlands desert area that surrounds Night City. Now players have been reporting that they are clearing the whole map of gigs and NCPD scanner hustles and not collecting all 7 trophies. It could be true that some of these mini missions are glitched and are not appearing properly thanks to how buggy the game can be. And I thought that was the case while I was doing these missions, but I found out some really important pieces of info. First, you will need to increase your street cred to the max in order to uncover all the mini missions. This will also get you the trophy Legend of the Afterlife in the process of hitting level 50, which is simply done by doing these gigs and NCPD missions. Secondly, certain mini missions only appear during certain times of the day, so progressing the clock forward in time and sleeping will uncover new mini missions. Thirdly, and the one that I think people are neglecting to do, you can uncover a couple of mini missions just by reading through the boatload of shards that you will be collecting. I think here's where many people are restarting their games for nothing. As I click through every shard making sure none of them are unread and Viola. A few more missions appeared and I got the last few trophies after completing them. 
Lastly, don't forget to do the Cyber Psycho missions mentioned earlier, as they count towards completing the districts. After all these things, you should unlock all the trophies. Before we take a look at the next set of trophies, I have to explain how attributes work and what you should really know going forward. It will also explain why these trophies are missable as well. When you start the game, you will be given a bunch of attribute points to spec into 5 different categories. As well, every time you level up, you will get an additional attribute point to spend. Each attribute category can be leveled up to a max of 20, or at least that's the max at the time of recording this. Also at the time of recording this video, the max level cap is 50, meaning you won't receive enough attribute points to rank up all 5 skills to level 20. So let's say there's a certain item that requires you to have 20 points in a certain category, and you are max level. You will be completely locked out of collecting that item for this playthrough because you don't have any more attribute points to spend. And there is no way to reset and respect these attributes once you have placed them. The skills that fall under each category have an item that will let you reset them but not your attribute points. And that's unfortunate because if you want to get the Platinum Trophy in one playthrough, you will be forced to spec into these attributes following for these three trophies. What you can do is hold on to at least 17 attribute points and then make a manual save. That way you can spec into what you need to get for the trophies and then once you have them, reload and continue on the path you were intending to do. Otherwise, these three trophies are going to require the following. Let's start with V for Vendetta. The trophy requires you to die, get revived using a cyberware called Second Heart, and then immediately get revenge on that enemy within 5 seconds of reviving. In order to first unlock this cyberware, you will need a street cred of at least 49, so almost at the cap. Then you will need to invest at least 16 attribute points in the body category. So make sure you have enough to invest before you hit the level cap. With both conditions met, you can now purchase the second heart at the Ripper Dock in South Haywood and have him equip it on you so that you can use it for the trophy. It really sucks to be forced to spec into an attribute that you might not want to, but the second heart is actually a really great thing to have, as it instantly revives you and has a pretty short cooldown of only 2 minutes. Next we got Master Crafter, which will pop when you craft 3 legendary items. At least with this one you have some options. To get this trophy, you can either spec 18 attribute points into the technical attribute, so you can unlock the perks that allow you to craft legendary weapons, or if you are rolling more on the netrunner side of life, you can spec 18 points in the intelligence attribute, so that you can unlock the perks for legendary quick hacks. I ended up specking into both, because holy smokes, Crafting is insanely good in this game. I steamrolled the rest of the game using legendary versions of Ping, Short, Circuit, and Contagion. No joke, crafting is great. And when you craft your first three legendary items, you will get the trophy. And lastly, the trophy, 10 out of 10, requires you to rank up a single skill category to level 20. Not one of the five attributes, but one of the 12 skills that fall under the 5 attribute categories. I know it's a bit confusing, but stay with me here. These skills are upgraded by doing certain tasks, like for example, the Breach Protocol skill in the Intelligence attribute is upgraded by using Breach Protocol against enemies in combat, and when you reap the benefits of your equipped daemons, you upgrade them by essentially doing stuff. But where the attributes play into this is that in order to rank up one of these skills to level 20, you will also need to have the associated attribute ranked up to level 20. I decided to go with the quick hacking skill, because I was already going that route for the legendary quick hacks for the Master Crafter trope. I got my intelligence attribute to level 20 and worked on upgrading my quick hack skill by using my equipped quick hacks. You can do this with any of the 12 skills so long as you follow the upgrade requirement. As a side note, I became a netrunner god once I reached max level. The final perk rewarded for having quick hack level 20 practically made it so I never ran out of ram, and combined with my legendary ping and short circuit, I could clear a room of enemies without ever stepping foot into it. I was that powerful. 
this game has a certain way of making you feel very powerful once you are upgraded and it's absolutely awe-inspiring. It's time to show you how to put those abilities to work in these combat related trophies. There are quite a few of them and we are going to start with these two. True Warrior is unlocked when you get 100 melee kills so grab a weapon like a katana, sledgehammer or better yet the mantis blades from a ripper dock and start slashing. The other one, True Soldier requires you to get 300 kills with ranged weapons. Now this is worded improperly as you can use any gun to progress towards the trophy. Even shotguns if you are trying to rank up the annihilation skill. You just have to make sure you get the kills from a distance. Gun Fu is going to require you to get up close and personal though, cause you are going to have to take down 3 enemies in a very short 3.5 second window with every enemy being no more than 5 meters away from you. That's not a lot of time to get up in 3 people's faces and drop them. It took me a bunch of tries to get it right and I ended up doing it on a group of net runners standing close to each other. I'm not trying to make any trouble with the cops although it's pretty easy to get away with the broken wanted system. Next up is 2 heads 1 bullet for taking down 2 enemies with 1 sniper bullet. I lined up the 2 enemies that were close enough to each other, charged the shot and wham bullseye. Pretty easy to do but make sure you hold on to a sniper because they are far less common than the other types of guns you're gonna find. Sometimes these enemies like to throw grenades to get you out of cover. When one does, get the trophy right back at you by taking out the punk who threw the grenade at you. You could also shoot the grenade out of the air with a revolver and get the trophy gunslinger in the process. But if you really want to do something fun, you can equip the quick hack detonate grenade and get the trophy Damon in the shell by taking down an enemy and two of his buddies with his own grenade exploding in his pocket. You will have to down all 3 people and the grenade the enemy is holding will have to be lethal. Sometimes the enemies will hold stuff like smoke grenades which while pretty funny won't get you the trophy. Getting your hands on the detonate grenade quick hack can be a little bit tricky. If you are investing in the intelligence attribute then you can just craft one which starts at purple rarity so you will just need to get the perk from the quick hack skill tree called hacker overlord but otherwise you will have to get it to drop from the voodoo boys enemies in pacifica and the drop rate is only 5% which leaves it up to rngs at that point. Another quick hack related trophy is must be rats where you will need to use the distract enemies quick hack in 30 different situations without them spotting you. This one is really easy to do over the course of your playthrough or you could even use it on the same dumb enemy over and over 30 times. Now in those same stealth situations, try to get the trophy Christmas tree attack by using your breach protocol and successfully uploading 3 daemons. The breach protocol is the matrix puzzle that can be hacked into cameras, motion sensors, enemies and a bunch of other stuff. The higher you invest in certain perks in the breach protocol skill tree, the easier this trophy will get. But if you were not planning on using breach protocol that often, the bare minimum you will need to invest in are two skill points invested into the perks Big Sleep and Mass Vulnerability. This will enable you to do the matrix puzzle and get three daemons unlocked. It won't be easy and you will need to keep doing it over and over again until you unlock the three to get the trophy. The trophy The Quick and the Dead can be unlocked by taking down 50 enemies while the time slow effect is active. In order to do this you will need to visit the ripper dock and make sure you have cyberware that grants you the slow down time effect. The game has a bunch of different implants that will activate the time slow effect under different conditions but the best one is called Dynalar Sandivistan which will let you activate it whenever you want just by pressing the L1 and R1 buttons. This specific implant is found at the ripper dock in the north side of the Watson district. The different rarities of the implant dictate how long the effect lasts but with a 30 second cooldown you really do not need to invest in more rarer ones if you only plan to use it for this trophy. I've saved the most annoying one for last which is rough landing. There are a few implants that give you berserk abilities like increased strength, armor and resistances. It also gives you the ability to jump up from high places and hit the ground with a superhero landing. 
This will cause a shockwave and for the trophy, you will need to use the superhero landing to take out two enemies at the same time. It sounds like fun, but trust me, no, it's not. The amount of setup for this really makes this trophy super annoying. First, you have to go to the Ripper Dock in the Charter Hill area of Westbrook and purchase the Biodyne Berserk Implant. The rarer, the better of course, but it will cost you more money and require more investment into the body attribute. Second, you have to find a spot where you can leap off of and there needs to be at least two enemies below you. Third, you are going to have to weaken them because at max health, chances are they're not going to die right away. Then fourth, you will need to activate the Berserk ability by pressing L1 and R1, jump off the ledge and land relatively close to both of them. Doing this whole process sucked because it was really tough to get alerted enemies to stick together. And sometimes when I did land beside them, one would survive or I would miss one of them completely because the radius of the shockwave is pretty small. Honestly, a pain in the ass trophy to get. But if you do successfully get two people with it, you will get the trophy. We are almost done with this platinum run. But as I mentioned earlier, I am saving the ending related trophies for last and there is no way that I can avoid spoilers for this section. If you don't want to be spoiled and try to figure it out for yourself, skip to the timecode in the description titled Platinum Trophy to continue on with the video and not be spoiled. Otherwise, we're going to continue on with how to get the last four trophies which are all missable in some way. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to obtain all four in one playthrough. Last chance to skip if you don't want spoilers. We are starting in three, two, one, go. During the final mission of the game called Nocturne OP55N1, Misty will bring you to the top of Victor, the Ripper Docks building, and you will sit on the balcony and hash out a plan with Johnny on how you're going to get into Arasaka's building and try and save V. The endings are all based on which of these three decisions you make when Johnny asks you what you're going to do. Now in order for you to choose through the three options that appear on screen, you need to have done both Pan Am storyline and Rogue storyline to completion to unlock option two and option three, which will lead to the star and the sun endings respectively. As well for option one, which leads to the devil ending, you will have needed to save Takamura in the mission right before this one called Search and Destroy. During that mission, there is no indicator telling you what to do. So I'm telling you now, whatever you do, do not leave the building without rescuing Takamura. You will not get the trophy, the devil, without him. If you choose that option one and play through the entire ending without having saved him prior, you will not receive the trophy. I've left a walkthrough video specifically for the search and destroy scenario to help you through it and then you can proceed through the devil ending and secure the trophy. Now let's talk about the second ending called the star, which is the option two where you ask Pan Am for help. All you have to do is follow that mission until you reach the part of the mission where you enter cyberspace with Alt Cunningham and Johnny. Here you will be faced with two options. You can either choose to live out the rest of your life by entering the well and returning to your body or you can walk across the cyberspace bridge and join Alt Cunningham in cyberspace. In this case, pick the former option and return to your body to get the star ending. However, choosing the latter option and giving up your body leaves it with Johnny Silverhand and leads to the temperance ending. You then just need to see that ending through to the end to get that trophy. For the very last trophy, the sun, you just need to proceed with option three, letting Johnny take the wheel and enlisting the help of Rogue. Proceed through the missions until you reach the exact same part as in option two when you reach cyberspace with Alt Cunningham. Only this time you will be in the body of Johnny and will have Alt and V in front of you. If you walk across the cyberspace bridge and give your body back to V, you will lead into the sun ending. However, as Johnny, if you decide to hop into the well, you will lead to, you guessed it, the temperance ending. There are two ways to get the temperance ending. That covers all four of the endings, but now how do you get all four endings without doing four playthroughs? Well, when you finish the final mission, 
a prompt comes up asking you if you would like to go back to before the point of no return. Just click it and you will be transported to right in front of the elevator. Now sitting through parts of the endings four times is kind of annoying. So the best thing to do is make a manual save right before you sit on the balcony with Misty to speed things up and have the ability to load right at that point. During the star ending, you can also make another manual save right after you face the last boss so that you can get both the star ending and then load up the save and get the temperance ending as well. You will know exactly the right moment to save when you get to that part. It's pretty unmistakable, just make sure the manual save is done before you hop into cyberspace. And that is everything you need to know about the Platinum Run of Cyberpunk 2077. It really is a complex web of missable things and things you may not have known about until I mentioned them in this guide. And if you have been following along with said guide and collected every trophy, congratulations! You will be awarded the Never Fade Away Platinum Trophy for Cyberpunk 2077. Overall, I enjoyed the game very much, but I don't know if I enjoyed getting the Platinum Trophy. It's not that friendly to players just wanting to pick up the game and play. I really had to read guides and do a lot of research before I started the game to make sure I was doing the right things and specking into the right attributes. In the game's current version, you can't double back on some of these trophies if you play it the wrong way. And that goes against the spirit of the game, where you get to be your own V, making your own choices and laying in the beds you make. Instead, the Platinum Run forces you to play the game a specific way to avoid having to do a second, potentially long playthrough. And don't get me started on the grind that you need to do to collect enough money to buy all of the vehicles for the Auto Jock Trophy. Take advantage of the money exploits while they are unpatched because an extra 20 or 30 hours of grinding sounds horrible. I'm not saying you will have a bad time getting the Platinum Trophy as there have been far worse Platinum runs, but I am saying it runs counter to the enjoyability of the experience. I am undecided about whether the devs could have done a better job choosing the trophies more carefully or if this is just a problem that exists with games in this genre. I guess I'll find out when I take on Fallout 4 in the PlayStation Plus Collection Challenge or if I ever double back and do guides for Skyrim or The Witcher 3. But in terms of my overall recommendation, I think right now it's worth waiting to see if future patches are going to introduce tweaks to the RPG mechanics and in-game economy. It could make the plunge into Night City and the Platinum Run a whole new experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a big one and took time to make. I hope you guys liked it. I really wanted to help you guys get the Platinum Trophy because I know that it's not easy to get this one, especially if you don't know what to do. So let me know if you like this episode, share it with people who are trying to get the Platinum Trophy as well, and let me know down in the comments section if you got it. I will see you guys in the next Platinum Hunters video. My name is Josh Rockstark, and peace out.